Okay, so let's do a little bit of exploring, um, creating our own very simple XSLT uh, using some of the things that, that we've seen already. Okay, so what I want to actually do this time is uh, I'm going to play around now with, uh, with small names. Okay, so here's smallnames.xml. Just going to drag that over into, uh, into my Firefox. Right, and um, from here, I'm going to do a uh, view XPath. Um, if you had view, if you had the XPath checker open before, um, what you'll need to do is close it first, and then uh, and then do view XPath again to make sure to uh, to see kind of the the current uh, document. Right. So here we have you know a bunch of a uh, a bunch of data, basically our uh, our names data. Now recall these names are selected at random when you run the small names XSL um, on this. So you're names um, may actually be will most likely be different from mine okay so I can do for instance you know see what uh, whoops see what name we have right so all of the name elements are as follows <coughs> so let's look at, a, at how we can actually take this data and just start writing it out kind of as plain text okay that is can we uh, can we very easily write an XSL that's going to allow us to uh, to generate um, just the names spit out and then we could dump them to a text file etc easiest way to do this sort of thing uh, take something like uh, like gradebook um, either one of these really doesn't matter um, and basically just copy this that is control C and then paste control V okay so I come into here and I'm just gonna call this uh, simple dot XSL okay then I will open that up with notepad plus plus and uh, and we have our stuff okay so now instead of uh, running it on quizzes dot XML this is going to be run uh, on small names so I'm just updating the documentation that's in the file like so now in this particular one well I'm not actually outputting HTML so I don't actually need uh, any of this stuff here um, and you know we do have a bunch of these other things here you know again a lot of this stuff is uh, is well beyond uh, what we need so you know there's this table stuff we don't really need that um, we don't really need any of these kinds of things um, so you know we can kind of trim this way down to all the way to here now I could uh, write this in an imperative style that is using a for each um, I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna see how far I can get with uh, with the declarative style okay so that is uh, I'm not even gonna use a for each here and so basically just come right all the way down to uh, to this point here okay so here what I'm saying is you know I'm going to uh, I'm gonna match um, on the uh, on the top level here okay um, so that is the top level thing in um, in this particular case right is our name pops so we have our rule for matching on that um, and then I'm just going to go into and apply templates okay so we have apply templates okay and then here what I'll do is simply select uh, on the type of thing that we wanted namely uh, we're selecting on so let's see so we got to the top so the top thing is a name pops and then we have a name pop entry I believe yes name pops plural name pop singular and that has name direct that has basically name and pops um, nested underneath so I want the name And right now, that's all that's doing. Okay, so apply it. Apply the template that would actually apply to these kinds of things. That's what that says. All right. Then what I need is uh, I'm actually going to need a real template that does match that. Okay, so I'm going to have another template thing here. And since this is XML, need to make sure to close that. Um, and in this case what I'm just gonna say is actually so match on the name okay so even though notice this this match isn't uh, does isn't the same as the select this will actually work okay this will find that name thing and allow us to do what we want here now all I really want to do is print out the value of whatever that name field is okay so uh, that is the value of 
operation, right? And generally, you have a selector, which is an X path expression for what it is that you want to uh, that you actually want to output. Okay. Um, well, I really want to output exactly the thing that was matched. Okay, and that's what you use the dot for. Okay, so the dot says whatever this whatever was just matched, namely the name. Um, that's the value that we want to stick in here. Okay, so let me go ahead and save that. And so it is saved. And let's actually go ahead and try to run that. So Java dash jar and I'll type SA and uh, I hit tab and I have tab completion enabled. So you'll notice it puts in all of that stuff. Um, so we said we're going to run this on small names XML. That's our data. And simple XSL is the transform. Okay, so I run that. Um, and so notice it prints out a little uh, little introduction here, a declaration for an XML document. Okay, so by default, um, XSL uh, basically thinks it's going to spit out another XML document. Okay, so unless we kind of change some things, um, we're always going to have uh, have this little sort of specification in here. The other thing you might notice is that all of these names are kind of on the same line together. Okay, so. You know, there's a couple of different ways of uh, of kind of hacking around this to get them on individual lines. Uh, let me show you one of them. Um, one one kind of little hack or kludge, if you will, um, is to use the XSL text tag. And what you do for that is simply say, okay, here's an, here's the open, and then I have, and then I basically just uh, went to the next line. Um, so the XSL text tag basically says output literally this text, and the only thing we have in here is a new line. Okay, so we'll take a look there. Again, rerun this, and now notice we see um, all of our elements: Cheryl, Waldo, Albin, Retta, um, basically on a new line. Ellis um, starts off on the first line. The other thing you'll notice too is there's this kind of indentation. Um, again, you might want to actually adjust because it turns out that the indentation that we have here for um, for our output does in fact affect um, what we see for the uh, for the uh, I'm sorry for our input really does in fact um, affect what the document actually looks like. Okay, so we come back to here and now we see all right it actually is in fact uh, nice and flush up against the left hand side. Okay, now let's play around a bit with um, with this whole XML output declaration. Um, some of the rules for this stuff: if the first thing, if the first sort of level of output is HTML, then XSLT basically assumes you're dealing with HTML as opposed to XML. If you want to deal with other things, or if you want to sort of control um, how all of this stuff is working, what you actually need is the XSL output specifier. Okay, so it's, the, it's a tag, um, and then you can simply say the type of thing that uh, that you want, all right? So here I can say, okay, I'm actually dealing with uh, with text, all right? So I do that, and you'll notice now we have um, just the text. We we no longer have our you know here is the particular version of XML because there's no reason to declare this as an XML because we've told XSLT that uh, that we are in fact dealing with text only. Okay, so we have uh, something that's actually formatted a bit nicer. Now, one other thing is, you know, again, I mean, we may in fact want to decide to sort these things or alphabetize these names, okay? Turns out in XSLT, that is dead simple, okay? So all I'm going to do, so I'm going to come up to here, okay? Now the sort tag can actually be applied in a couple of places. Sort can exist either as a child node of an apply templates tag, or a child node of a um, of a for each tag. Okay, and in fact, in fact, I think you'll actually see right. So here, um, in the original gradebook one, we have sort as a child of for each. Um, here in uh, gradebook two, similarly, we have a sort. So let me just show you how this is going to be used. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of having this be a self-closing tag because it needs to actually have a child inside it or underneath it, if you will, um, I need to close this tag separately. 
right? And then inside here, I can simply say that I want um, these particular values sorted, right? Um, what do I want to sort or what value that do I want to sort them on? Well, the name themselves, right? And that is the, um, the particular thing that is selected by that X path. So that's all I need to do. I simply say, okay, sort these. Um, by default, it's going to sort ascend in ascending order. Um, effectively, for our purpose, it's going to be alphabetical order. Um, and so when we do that, come down to here, run this again, and now we see our output coming out in alphabetical order. Okay, so that's kind of the way that I suggest you you develop these things. You know, again, write a little bit of stuff, test things out, um, and iterate until done.